for those not in attendance at the Vauxhall celebration, you missed the most remarkable coup of the season. It appears Miss Daphne Bridgerton has captured the interest of the newly returned Duke of Hastings. Bridgerton season 1 boasts a large cast of interesting characters, including some brand new faces who never appeared in Julia Quinn's novels. Bridgerton brings many of the characters from Julia Quinn's popular romance novels to Netflix, but it also introduces several brand new characters never before seen in the books. The first season was packed with drama from a number of different interconnected plotlines and romances, some of which mirrored their book versions. Yours truly. Lady Whistledown. The romance between Simon and Daphne is different in some ways, she has more trouble attracting suitors, for instance, the buddy core of their story and its central conflict, the fight over whether or not to have children, remains the same. You stay. You stay. And we the show improves some of the more problematic elements of their book relationship, though many viewers feel it doesn't go far enough to fix their toxic Regency love story. Watch as Miss Calpa lowers her eyes. Mm. Oh, so demure. The show's various subplots vary more dramatically, with some being entirely new. One of the main ways Bridgerton diverges from its source material is in the collection of characters it adds to the story. I would like to know the very saying. Perhaps we might begin with why you chose to interrupt such an exquisite morning. Because she is already engaged to be married. The Duke has already asked for your hand. I'm not engaged, Mama. Has anyone truly proposed to me? No. Have I proposed to anyone else? The Bridgertons themselves and many in their circle make the move to Netflix more or less the same, but they are joined by several key figures who help push the narrative along. These are all the characters featured in Bridgerton season one who aren't in the books. Things of the lady. But you are not a real suitor, are you? And besides, no one else will tell me anything. Queen Charlotte, while far from one of the show's main characters, Queen Charlotte has a huge impact on the overall story of Bridgerton. Her initial praise for Daphne gives her a strong investment in the young woman's affairs, and the queen constantly meddles through attempted setups and prideful ploys. Charlotte even gets a bit of an arc in the latter part of the season. Seeing her terribly ill husband King George III gives some needed dimension and sympathy for the character. She may be more of a plot device than a fully featured character, but she's also a lot of fun. Bridgerton's distinct aesthetic is a big part of its appeal, and every single one of Queen Charlotte's hairdos and tiny dogs adds to that colorful, powerful style. Charlotte also plays an important role in the show's fictionalized world building, as her marriage to the king is seemingly one of the main reasons why people of color have been given reparations of land and political power. Uh, uh, have you done something? What have you done? What has this woman done to my child? Majesty. No, what have you done? Prince Friedrich, in The Duke and I, Daphne is several steps removed from being the season's diamond, as she is in the show. The book shows her in her second season, having already moved through her first year of eligibility without a marriage match. She has much more trouble attracting suitors in Quinn's version, which makes her relationship with Simon a bit different as well. In the show, Daphne is much more popular in the marriage market, even attracting the affections of a foreign prince. Bridgerton's Prince Friedrich, the Prince of Prussia, plays a small but significant role in season one, but he does not appear in the novels at all. Offer her your gift. I've brought you a gift. Friedrich offers Daphne an alternate future to her convoluted love affair with the Duke, presenting himself as an all-around good and respectful guy. In some ways, he might have been a better pairing, though Daphne and Simon eventually manage to work through the struggles together. While it seems unlikely that Prince Friedrich would return in future seasons, it would be a fun reprisal. He's an easily likable character after all, and certainly deserving of finding love. There you are. Here I am, Your Highness. As I was saying. Sienna Rosso, one of Bridgerton's bigger romance plotlines is that of the Viscount Anthony Bridgerton and his opera singer mistress, Sienna Rosso. The books do have a parallel for Sienna, an opera singer named Maria Rosso who appears later in the series, but her role is much smaller, and Sienna's relationship with Anthony is much more substantial and dramatic. In the show, Sienna represents everything Anthony can't have, a free life, without the undesired responsibilities and restrictions of leading a notable family. The affair between Sienna and Anthony seems to end concretely at the end of season one, and it should be interesting to see how closely the Viscount's story follows the book version going forward.
Will and Alice Mondridge, a breath of fresh air and much-needed juxtaposition to the once-worn gowns and suffocating formalities of high society, Will and Alice Mondridge enter the Bridgerton story largely as accessories to Simon's personal arc. By the end though, they become much more fully developed, with Will getting his own story about balancing professional pride with family loyalty. Both Mondriches are well-written and wonderfully played, even for their relatively small amount of screen time. Given the show's apparent fixation with bare-knuckle boxing, Will and Simon's shirtless sparring matches are likely to return in Bridgerton Season 2. Win this fight and perhaps we leave this city. We can take our exhibitions all over England if we wish. To continue living fight to fight. Lord Featherington does not appear in Quinn's novels, as he is already dead when they begin. The show resurrects him and make him a pretty important figure in the story, as he justifies both Marina Thompson's extended stay with the Featheringtons and the poor fortunes of the rest of the family. He's a generally detestable and pitiable figure, but his death at the end of season one is one of the more interesting twists. Season two promises more drama with the Featherington heir, all of which should be new material not found in the book. Oh, my lady, there is news. There is the butter. It is your husband, Mom. saying he is dead. The Bow Street Runners have questions. Hope you liked that video and if you haven't subscribed this channel, do subscribe it and we will see you in the next video. Majesty. No, what have you done? What have you done? No, no, you come back here.